Welcome to our Thursday Live. I am Nadine Fossler, better known as Mama Choco, and you are visiting me in my home studio. The videographer for the day is my daughter Kaylee. Kaylee, thank you for your time. It's a so lovely to be with her. We actually started this journey in COVID, in the hot lockdown, to first of all keep ourselves sane and busy and then secondly to give inspiration and ever since the process hasn't stopped um, i am here to give inspiration to motivate to be creative because in being creative we are finding tools to heal to empower ourselves and to feel good about ourselves and this is the reason for the session to give inspiration you can apply it in colors in ways that you think and want to do and that you like i'm just the instrument and tool for inspiration so welcome to my home studio in south africa and wherever you're watching from sit back relax enjoy share your location with us and feel inspired the main thing about choco and choco is a proudly South African water-based, non-toxic, eco-friendly paint focused on job creation and empowerment. But other than the fact that we are trying to empower people, create job opportunities within South Africa, we have a very special product that's eco-friendly, non-toxic, water-based, and we try to upcycle all the time. And the reason for today's live is to show you easy ways of upcycling even the packaging our stencils come in and all pieces of wood so let's start what you are going to need for this workshop is the following choco paints antique brown glaze you are going to need some choco paint cloud white you are going to need a drop of choco paints sheriff stone a choco paint stencil in the design of your choice. Every stencil comes with backing. This is what the packaging looks like. And this backing, you are going to use the backing of our stencils to create art. Pieces of old pallet board assembled and glued together. We also sell this at choco paint, so if you struggle to source, we have a solution. Um, then you are going to need the following tools. A dry piece of rag, anything you have in and around the house. A wet piece of rag. I'm using my Hamilton's paint brushes. A fiber brush. A blending brush. A stencil brush. And then a sharp pointy object. I'm going to use a knife and some screws. Four black screws, depending on the amount of pieces of art that you are going to create. And then a screwdriver. Rahobi Powerless Tools works like a charm. I just have mine on the site where we're busy revamping. So I'm going to make use of hand tools, but the Rahobi tools are excellent tools and they are Cordless. If you are struggling with load shedding, if you're in South Africa and do have that as a challenge, that solves your problem. First of all, I'm going to start with my damp rag. I'm going to stir my antique brown place. Give it a good mix. I use my paintbrush, dip it in my glaze, spread it onto my rag and before I'm going to actually wipe it onto my wood and the reason for this technique is I want to stain my piece of wood that it doesn't look like pine but that it actually looks more aged and more more something classy and expensive I first wipe my piece of wood with a damp cloth and the reason for this is if your wood is damp and it's raw wood it hasn't received any varnish coating 
and this is key to the, to the success of this technique. It needs to be raw wood. If your wood is damp, it just absorbs the glaze more evenly to just discolor your wood. Next, I move to the section on my cloth where I have applied the anti-glaze. And what I do is I'm now going to stain my wood with my anti-glaze. And I wipe my palette board with my anti-glaze. Remember, you can decide how dark, how light you want your surface to be. If you want to remove any excess, you immediately take a damp cloth and you wipe away. And that will manipulate the level of darkness that you see on your surface. Okay, I'm going to allow my board just to rest for a bit. So you can see how different thicknesses and um, it's actually different pieces of wood, how it absorbs the glaze differently. Okay, so each piece looks different. That's part of being creative. All of us will try to create the same thing, but each thing will look different because we all are different and embrace that. I'm going to let my board rest for a moment. We will continue with the next technique on our boards in a bit. So I'm just moving away. Now I'm going to move over to the backing of my stencils. So this is part of the cardboard that comes in the stencils. Reuse as much as possible. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to place my stencil design on top of my board. Now this is cardboard. I cannot secure my stencil with masking tape, else it will damage the paper. But what I'm going to do is I'm just going to press hard with my free hand to secure my stencil in position to prevent it from moving onto my, on my surface. I'm going to make use of a stencil brush. Now a stencil brush is the best tool when it comes to stencil work. It has short, hard bristles. I'm going to make use of the color share of stone. Remember, color is a personal preference and use a color that makes you happy. I'm just inspiration. I dip the tip of my stencil brush in my 25 mil. So this is our sample pots. It's a little bit of paint that really comes a far way. Great for creative and arty projects. So there's the paint only on the tips of my stencil brush, but still to have a successful stencil technique, I need to remove excess. So on my drop sheet, I'm going to remove excess paint, rather too little than too much. You don't want the paint to seep underneath your stencil work. I secure my stencil with my free hand. I press hard onto my surface and I move in circular motion over my stencil with my paint. I've attended um, a Daiko school event with a home magazine quite recently and we spoke about the psychology of color and something that I do want to share with you um, is the following. So yellow provokes happiness. If you need a happy spot in your house, and the patio is actually the best place for this, because this is also the space in our homes where we feel less anxious to play with color. Incorporate some yellow, then it will be your happy place, a nice place when you want to relax, spend time outside to go sit, think of beautiful yellow scatters outside. If you need inspiration, you need, you need creativity to be evoked. That color is green. So I said to the girls during the day course school, the only place where I actually find the time to sit and relax is the toilet. So I think my bathroom, I will paint in green. So while I'm sitting, relaxing, having time to take a breath, I will also um, have the opportunity to surround me with a color 
that that gives inspiration. Okay, so I have completed my stencil with Sheriff Stone. I have applied more than one coat due to the fact that I'm using such little paint to make sure that it doesn't seep through. I remove my stencil. Okay, and there you can zoom in nicely. And there I have a beautiful piece of art. And you could also have used a blending technique where you've used various different colors. If you wanted to do this in greens, creative crystal, maestro, laughingly ashat, a beautiful selection of greens. Do what makes you happy. I'm going to move back to my board so the glaze has had time to just dry on my surface so it's already dry and um, it has stained the surface but I do want to add that driftwood effect to my surface. I do want to make sure I accomplish that and to accomplish that I'm going to make use of Hamilton's blending brush, a 70 millimeter Hamilton's blending brush. I'm going to make use of the color cloud white and as with the stencil work, I just wet the tips of my brush with paint. But can you see there's a lot of blocks of paint on my brush? I do not want that. So what I'm going to do is I remove excess on my drop sheet, make sure it's nice and dry. And the next technique I'll be showing is a dry brush technique. So think of what we've just done with the stencil work. Think when you put some blush on your cheeks. I have decided that I'm going to spend more time on makeup. I've been painting furniture, I've been painting walls, but for the life of me, I don't know how to paint my own face. Um, so that's something that I promised myself I will improve on. Dry brush, and this is the technique. It's a dry brush, very little paint on it, and I'm working on a dry surface. And now what I'm going to do and this is a subtle change that you will see. I don't know how visible it will be on the screen, but I'm brushing just to soften the color on my surface. So there's no solid paint work happening here. It's actually a technique that mimics sanding. So if I always tell in workshops, if you want two tips on how to rescue something. It's a dry brush technique and a sanding technique. Because with a dry brush technique, in an instance, you can create a subtle change. Kaylee, and can you start seeing the difference? It's difficult because my eye and this, the eye of a camera looks different at things. So what I see is not necessarily what seen through a camera, but I'm going to try my best to make the change visible. And then also what you can do with a dry brush technique is change direction and also color. But remember now, I have planned a green space in my house and you can remember what that room is. Um, so for the first person, that can tell me what that green room in my house is, we will send a special, um, if you're within the borders of South Africa, a special gift back. So quickly type in that answer. And then I move direction and I dry brush in a different direction. So my old piece of pine wood, pallet wood, that was thrown away is now something that looks like driftwood, that looks absolutely beautiful. And this is also the backing of my piece of art. There are two people, three people commenting already. Is it? Do they know where's my green space in my, in my, in my house, Gailey? Okay, so there's my dry brushed surface. Is it beautiful, Kaylee? Can Are you zooming in? Now the men, Yaku and Yaku, the two Yakus in our lives, get um, many complaints if they do the 
camera work. Of course, main, not all main, the two yakus in my house is not focused on detail. So that's why us girls took over. What I'm going to do next is I'm going to use the sharp object, which is my knife. I'm going to position my artwork in the center. I'm going to mark more or less a centimeter from the top and the centimeter from the side. I'm going to mark, make a hole in my paper with my sharp object and also through the wood. This is like the pi pilot hole to make sure when I screw it in um, that it's done easily. So pilot hole, pilot hole. Then I take a black screw And I so wanted to show you the Rahobi screwdriver, but trust me, it's fantastic. It works much easier than the tool I have here, especially on a live, but we can wing anything. And I, this actually keeps my art piece in position. And I'm going to do it in all four corners. And I'm going to do the same in the bottom and the bottom. I do believe the process makes sense. And what I'm going to do, so vision this with me. I'm going to make three boards like this three different botanical prints and then I'm going to hang it in my bathroom against a green maestro wall and that is going to be my art. Okay, I'm still building my house and um, one of these days it will be complete and then I'll be able to share everything with you. Okay, my message for the week is don't be scared to dare. Try things out in your life. Don't be afraid of color. Even if it's color on your lips, it will be. It will put a smile on your face and also a smile on others' faces. Be the color that someone else needs to put a smile on their face for a day. I hope that you will have the most wonderful week ahead. Till we see each other again next time, may it be an endlessly colorful week to each and every one of you. Love you lots. Mama Choco signing out.